Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some footage from a trip I took down to Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. This area is a legendary fishing location, especially for kayak anglers, as you can get right up into miles of marshes and wonderful scenery. Whenever you fish a new location, there's always a learning curve to figure out the fishery. So my hope with this video is I can share some tactics that I found worked really well. So in case you're going here with your family or fishing it for the first time, this will help you to find success and get on some awesome fish. The public boat ramp is located just south of Merle's Inlet's boardwalk, so if you park your car there, it's free parking. You can launch right out into the inlet, and you can either go into the backwaters or out towards the mouth. As you paddle out, always keep your head on the swivel for some boat traffic. There's lots of charter boats leaving in the morning, but man, you get some wonderful views, and especially hit it early in the morning before it gets too hot. While you're out here, you never know what you're going to run into, from flocks of pelicans to dolphins and sea turtles, and of course some sharks too. Okay guys, as long as we're staked out here, I just figured I'd go over what we're doing to catch some of these trout. Um, what we've got here is a quick pen squadron too. You can use any seven foot rod I like with a little bit of backbone. You don't want it too stiff because these things have like paper thin mouths and you'll pick the lure right out. So I can run in a seven foot rod here. I've got a pen spit fisher. I've got it rigged up with 40 pound test braid. You don't need to go that heavy. This I just use for striper fishing, but you could probably go as low as like 20 pound or even less for some of those uh, speckled trout because the line's not as important. Uh, down to here, we've got about maybe 32, 34 inches of 30-pound uh, fluorocarbon. Again, you could go lower to 20, would probably actually be better. Um, but this works really well in case you get into some larger bluefish or uh, red drum or things like that. We're running a uh, chartreuse mural lure. This does a great job of imitating all the mullet that's dancing around and schooling around here. So um, what I like to do is we take this, I'm going to flick it about 50, maybe 75 feet behind the kayak, and we control that. Trolling mirror lures is an extremely effective way to target a variety of marsh species, especially if you're fishing with young kids. This is a surefire way to search the marsh, find a location before you target it and start jigging it or working some soft plastics. Typically, I like to troll my mirror lures anywhere from about 1.5, if I'm going into some heavy current, up to three and a half miles per hour. That seems to be the sweet spot. Um, when you're going for speckled trout, they don't seem to be as picky as other species as to the direction of the current, especially when mullet is the target fish, so don't worry if you're fighting the inlet on the way out, you'll still probably pick some fish. I like to target with this away from those banks. You can see there's some oyster beds and things ahead. I'm going anywhere from about as skinny water as four feet all the way out to about nine feet. Those drop-offs, you'd be surprised how many fish are holding right off there. Using this method, you'll get on a variety of different fish. Over the weeks I was there, I trolled up tons of speckled trout, um, but also got into some nice blue fish, got some keeper flounder to come up and take it too. So don't think that just because you're you know, trolling with the mirror lure, you're missing out on these other species. A lot of them will come up and hit it too. Once you've dialed in a location with lots of fish, that's time to you know, pull over, start using some of those soft plastics, jigging the bottom. If you got kids, a great idea is using some live bait through a Carolina rig out there, or a popping cork or with a mud minnow. You'll get on tons of flounder and other stuff too. So I can't stress enough, you know, keep trying different things. I found out there, I went through a whole bunch of different lures till I found what was working for me. Maybe something else will work for you, but if you try out trolling that mirror lower first in these different southern marshes, you won't be disappointed. In late August, there's always a storm around. I found most days when I was out there, mid-afternoon, one came rolling in. So always keep your head on a swivel, check your forecast in advance, especially in these small boats, you don't want to test that. So if you see those storm clouds, start heading back in. So guys, that's all we got for this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you have any questions or comments, drop one down below. If, of course, if you like this video, like it. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I've done a bunch of trips to Virginia. Uh, we've got some I'll be uploading from Cape Cod and also took uh, some Adirondack Lake ones from up in New York. So hit that subscribe button. I'll be posting some more this winter. Thank you so much for watching. Aqua Base Outdoors.